Hi there, this is a video about Coordinate Master for Windows. Coordinate Master is a program that allows you to convert from one coordinate system to another. By default, it's converting from lat long to lat long, which is not all that useful. So we choose a new output coordinate system. So for example, I choose UTM and I choose the zone that I'm interested in. Zone 56 Southern Hemisphere, which is where Sydney is. And I press OK. OK, so we press the Convert Forward button and the latitude longitude values here have been converted into Eastings and Northings. OK, we go the other way too. We can press the up arrow. Now, a few more things. You can ch change the lat long format. By default, it's decimal degrees, but you might want to choose degrees minutes, which is quite popular, in which case you can see the format has changed to degrees minutes, or degrees minutes seconds, and there we go, degrees minutes seconds. Um, by default, it's in decimal degrees. Right. So, what else you can do is you can press this little button here to see where a location is. So, if we want to see where minus 33151 is in lat long, we just press this button, and it lets us enter a name, or we can use the default. So we can type a name, press OK. Now, if we have Google Earth installed, it will automatically open up and show us where that location is. So there it's out in the middle of nowhere somewhere. And if we just hover over that, we can see that's the coordinates, minus 33, 151. Okay, so we do the same thing with pretty much any coordinate system. The button here will convert automatically to lat long WG34 and it will show us in Google Earth where this location is. So let's try enter a different different coordinates here. This will be somewhere else, so we just press that. Type a name if you want. And we go from somewhere to somewhere else. Okay, so that's that's what you can do with Google Earth. And we've also got this button here, which lets you view all the possible projections and edit them. So if you press that button, it will hopefully bring up this text file in the editor. That's the default editor on Windows for you. And you can see all the definitions of all the coordinate systems that are supported by default. And if you scroll right to the bottom, there's a user coordinate system section where you can um, add your own. So the easiest way to add a coordinate system is just basically, you know, copy and paste into there from a coordinate system that's similar and change the parameters. For example, if, if you know the datum parameters are different, but everything else is the same, just change the datum parameters and paste it in here and you'll have your new coordinate system. Of course, um, you'll need to change the name um, to something else so that you're not confused. Okay. So when you view a coordinate system, you want to choose a coordinate system. There's a button here, view, de view details. This shows you the details of that coordinate system. So coordinate systems are quite technical. So if you don't want to um, delve into that detail, um, you can just use the existing coordinate systems that are defined. Um, as you can see, there's there's quite a few to choose from. There's 1,700, in fact. Um, so you've got things like the US state plane, um, various other countries' coordinate systems. Um, so you've got a lot of choices there. But if you do want to create your own coordinate system, you'll need to um, understand the basics here, which is um, each coordinate system has a name, so that's just a string you choose. It has ellipsoid parameters, which is the semi-major axis, and the inverse flattening. And it has datum parameters, which provide, um, uh, so we've got three shifts, three rotates in, in X, Y, Z, and then a scale factor. So these values um, change the datum into um, WS84 from, from your datum. So in this case, the, the datum is WS84 already, so those are all just zeros. Um, if you only have, these are the seven parameter shift, if you only have the three parameter shift, you can just enter the three parameters and leave the other zero. That's fine. Um, the next thing along here is the uh, PROJ4 command. 
So Coordinate Master is using a um, public domain library called Proj4 to perform the projections. It has this rather unusual um, command syntax. So uh, you, you'd have to look up the documentation for the Proj4 library to fully understand these, but I'll just basically go through what they mean. So Proj is the projection name, so in this case, transverse Mercator. Lat underscore zero is the latitude of origin. Lon underscore zero is the longitude of origin. K is the scale factor. X underscore zero is the false easting. Y underscore zero is the false northing. And then we've got the semi-major axis and inverse flattening, um, which are often uh, duplicates, duplicates of what we've ended up here. Okay, so that's the Proj4 command. There's lots of different um, projections. Each has their own uh, set of parameters that you have to put them. You can usually search on Google for the coordinate system you're interested in and hopefully find the parameters. Um, but certainly you can look in the um, Proj4 um, projections file, which comes with this tool to see examples of similar coordinate systems to what you might be looking for. Okay, so finally there's the affine parameters. This, this is an optional line in the um, projections file. Um, so what affine parameters are is a, a modification basically of the coordinates uh, before the projection occurs. So um, this is used um, for local grids like in mines, um, just so that they can have a, a locally uh, aligned grid system. Um, don't worry about this too much. Um, this is kind of a bit advanced, even more advanced topic than normal projections. So um, the modifications um, are, are spelled out by these formulas here. But if you have um, affine parameters set to these values here, then there'll be no transformation because it's just basically saying x equals x, y equals y. Okay, so that's the coordinate system details. So for every single coordinate system in here that you, you have a look at, you can, you can view the details. Um, alternatively, you can look at them in the projection files it's, itself. Okay, so now what you might want to do uh, next is um, you might want to convert a file that has um, coordinates in it. So for example, you might want to go from an Australian um, zone 56 coordinates to let's say lat long WS84. Okay, so for example, let's just do a test point. We convert that, that's the latitude, longitude, that looks about right. Okay, so what we do when we want to convert a file is we set up coordinate master on this main page so that it has the transformation that we want. So from UTM or MGA um, to lat long. And then we go convert file, and then we browse to the input file that we're interested in. Now this is just a, usually just a, a common delimited text file, which is like an Excel CSV file. Um, so a preview of it is shown here. This has just loaded the, the first part of the file and previewed it in this window. So we can just see what we've got. Um, up here it says the conversion that is going to be performed. So that's just what we chose on the main page. Um, so down here we've got number of header lines. So header lines are basically any lines that don't have data in, that are just um, headings for the other columns or uh, comments. So we want to ignore those. So we just set number of line, header lines to one. That'll ignore that when we're doing the conversion. Okay, so the type of file can be comma delimited or space delimited. And then we want to choose the eastern northing field. So the fields are just numbered one through two, three, so on. So we just choose the easting field, which in this case is the second field along, and then we choose the northing field, which is the third field along. Okay, so in a normal situation, we might want to just convert it to another CSV file. So we press convert, and that creates an output CSV file. Okay, so that's been created. Now I'll just um, bring that up if I can find it down here. There we go. And I'll just open that with, uh, let's say, Notepad. Right, um, I should also open the input file that we were using, just so you can see what it's done. 
Okay, so this is the original input file. You can see that we've got point 0.1 and then the eastern and northern coordinates, so on, point to point 0.12. So in the output file, we've got the fear, the name has been unchanged, has not changed. The header line is just copied through unchanged. The the name field, in fact, any other fields on this line other than eastern and northern haven't been changed. Um, but what's happened is the the input value of 300,000 for the easting and 6,300,000 for the northing have been transformed into their equivalent uh, longitude and latitude values. Um, you'll note that the longitude uh, corresponds to the easting, so it's shown first. Uh, the, the output first, as you'd expect, it's just the easting's being converted into longitude. Okay, so that is CSV file conversion. Now, what you also might like to do is do a conversion. I'll just open that file again and just get back to the setup we had. Okay, so you might also want to convert to a CSV file, I mean a, a KML file, in which case you can choose the name, description, and altitude field also, and that will come through into the KML file. In this case, we've only got a name field. We don't have any description or altitude, so I'll just choose that. And then when I press convert, then I choose from the drop down, I choose KML file and then press save. Okay. So I should just mention that if you're going to output to KML, you may need to make sure latitude, longitude latitude WS84 is the selected output coordinate type, otherwise you'll get an error because um, KML ex expects the coordinates to be latitude longitudes. Okay. So once it's saved it, it says do you want to open it in Google Earth. If you say yes, then it will bring up Google Earth and you will see, once it loads, you will see those coordinates as a KML file. There we go. And they're all just sort of randomly placed points there along, along the line. Um, also, if you output to a KML file, you can actually import that into uh, handy GPS on, on uh, Android or iPhone. Um, okay, so there's just one more button here, the zones tool. So if you want to know which UTM zone you're in, for example, my longitude here is about 151 degrees. Just type in 151, it tells you that you're in UTM zone 56. And it's got a few other things here, like the extents of that zone and the, cent the central meridian for that zone, so the central longitude for that zone. Um, if you're in, say, the US, you might have a longitude of minus 100, so 100 degrees west, and that would be zone 14. Um, so that's just what the zones tool does. This button here, keep on top, is useful because if you've got um, other windows, then it just stays on top of them, and sometimes it's and if you uncheck that, then it'll go behind. So it's sometimes just useful to have it stay on top of everything. Um, finally, here there's the About box. You press that, it just tells you the version and uh, gives you the website address. So that's Coordinate Master. And hopefully you'll find it quite useful um, in terms of interactive conversions and in terms of converting files, batch conversions. and um, the, the most difficult bit will be adding your own coordinate systems uh, if you if you need to support ones that aren't in this file already. So as I may have mentioned, simplest way is to find a coordinate system which is similar to what you want. Just uh, copy and paste it into the user coordinate system down section down the bottom here and modify accordingly. Um, you can find more um, resources about that on the Binary Earth website. Okay, thanks for watching. I, I hope you find the tool useful.